Hey everybody, this is Shad Sullivan coming to you from the headwaters of Bitter Creek, Archer County, North Texas. We have to talk. State officials will be assisting to help identify potential alternative markets if a producer is unable to move animals and if necessary, advise and assist on depopulation and disposal methods. Ladies and gentlemen, we are plowing under vegetable crops from coast to coast. We are euthanizing millions of chickens. We are aborting sows and burying feeder pigs. We are dumping milk by the hundreds of thousands of gallons and now they are preparing us to depopulate the fat cattle ready to harvest because of a bottleneck created by the effects of COVID. This thing hasn't been created by COVID, but the effects of COVID and the logistics therein. We are in trouble. Our food supply is in trouble. And I am appealing to producers and consumers across the nation to start calling. Yesterday, the first shipment of imported beef from the country of Namibia hit the shores of the United States of America. And yet this morning, they are telling us to prepare to euthanize harvest-ready cattle. Am I the only one that sees a problem in this? It is time we get the American people back to work. It is time we get money flowing. It is time we get food on the shelves. Because if you're not concerned about this food supply problem, you better be. We have a huge supply and demand of food across this nation. We can feed the world ourselves, and yet we're destroying our harvests. At the same time, we are importing beef from other countries, beef that is less regulated than our beef, less safe, not as high quality of product, and yet it's happening. At the same time, they are preparing for us to euthanize our harvests. Does that make sense to America? America? For the last 10 years, we have been uh, pressed to be sustainable. I've said all along, sustainability is a fraud. And right now, we're being forced to destroy our harvests. That doesn't sound like sustainability to me. But it is part of the overall goal to vertically integrate your food system. You see, they cannot have control of the people unless they have control of the food, the water, the land, production. It is time we get back to work. It is time uh, the American people force uh, the government to listen to us. We are of, by, and for the people. This is not Nancy Pelosi's country. This is not Donald Trump's country. This is your country. And you're going to go hungry. We must get regional and local packing houses up and going. Do we have to have those big, big packing plants? You bet we do, and they need to be running right now. We need help. You as a consumer are in trouble. My dad told me years ago the best thing that would happen to America is if everybody had to sit in the dark, cold, and hungry, and that would wake them up. Well, I think it's coming. We're in a dangerous position, ladies and gentlemen. We need to get inspectors into these small plants. We need to get better inspectors. We need to get going on this today, not tomorrow, today. You need to be calling your legislators. We need to be opening up the country. Your food supply is in danger. Ranchers are going broke every day. We're doing all we can to stay here. We are in crisis in America. This is a crisis. This is a national crisis. And everybody's just sitting back enjoying their time off, enjoying that $1,200, not knowing that overnight you're going to go hungry. It's coming. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we need your help. We need your help today. Everybody, all hands on deck. It's time. We need you to go to USA, uh, demandusabeef.com, sign the petition for country of origin labeling. People want to know where their food comes from. I don't want any beef out of Namibia. I don't want any beef out of Brazil. I want my own beef. I'm blessed to be able to eat my own beef. But a lot of you aren't. And you need the freedom to choose your product. Demand mandatory country of origin labeling. Demand that these people get back to work. Where have our patriots gone? Where are you? I ask you that today. This thing's going to be incredibly tough overnight. It's already tough. You think the shelves were empty two weeks ago. You just wait. We have a bottleneck in this processing facility and the logistics in this uh, transportation system of our food supply. You think we're not in trouble? We are. I'm sorry. My tone is so bad. I'm so upset. But we have got to get this going today, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate your support. Producers, start reaching out to consumers. Forget these associations. Forget all of the the corrupt bull crap that's been going on. We got to put a stop to it too. It's time. My apologies for my tone. I'm worried about my country. I'll try to make it a good day, you guys. All right, I want to show you all this post, which is absolutely on point. So uh, this is a dairy farmer. So a week ago, we said goodbye to our girls. I know most of my friends in, on Facebook do not understand why the dairy industry is struggling to stay in existence. I would like to share my thoughts. We have been dairy farmers for over 50 years. The business is not a job for the weak, un unorganized, undetermined, inefficient, incompetent, and wasteful. Many times, we have been referred to as dumb farmers until you got caught in a snowbank or wanted to go hunting on our land. Only then was it that you thought of us as useful farmers. Many of you believe that food just miraculously, dairy, beef, poultry, pork, vegetables, fruit, appear on the shelves. I wonder, did you ever question where our food will come from when the producers of your food will have been driven out of business? The problem, producers, farmers, have lost control over the market. Example, we have dairy cooperatives buying out processing plants and other cooperatives creating a monopoly on our market. The co-op we used, we were forced to deal with is one of the largest and now has the power to enforce unjustified deductions from the dairy farmer's milk check. If the, farm, if the farmer does not agree with the deductions, he is told he can look other somewhere else for the market. There is no other market because of the monopoly. The generation of dairy farmers is getting older with very little interest in replacing them. A young person that has interest in starting a dairy farm would face a debt load of 10 times that of a doctorate's uh, college degree. Many people don't have the work ethics that it needs to run a farm of any kind. It seems today many want a nine to five job. Farming is 24 seven without paid vacations, holidays, insurance coverage, and no 401k. Many, uh, many have said to help the new generation of farmers, the older farmers would have to transfer their working farm over to a young person that has an interest in becoming a farmer. The problem is the old farmer is looking, for, looking at his farm as his 401k, and I know none of you would relinquish your 401k to help jumpstart someone else's career. So my fear is that one day the hay fields that we enjoy so much will become housing developments. The countryside dotted with little red barns and cows grazing will be no longer. But the biggest fear for me is that we will solely depend on foreign food to satisfy our hunger. All because of greed from large corporations that claim that they are farm owned Question, is the corporation where farm own, farmer owned? Why is that that farmers don't receive insurance coverage like the employees? Why would dairy farmers subsidize buying an almond milk plant to replace his product? 
Why would farmer why would the farmer pay five times for the same deduction? I'm missing my girls. He's talking about his milking cattle. They were a good bunch of old ladies, and I think of them as my family, and it feels like a death has occurred in my family. I'm sure many of you won't relate to my frustration and despair. I absolutely understand. And this is horrific. This is horrific. And this is happening across our country for exactly what he said. Greed. Lazy. Allowing these large corporations and even people as communist China to take over our packing plants and take over everything. It's sad. It, it's truly sad. Um, he's got a lot of um, good content on here. This shad. I, I just couldn't imagine um, our country looking like China one day. Those flyover states that people think of as nothing mean a lot to a lot of people. And if we don't do something about it, we'll all live in a New York City, a sustainable city, as they want to call it. And you will be eating meat that is not even real meat. As our, our stock market plunges into just horrendously, the markets of these artificially grown meat products are skyrocketing. How is that possible? Because these big billionaires are putting all their money into them. If you want to see what's really going on, go to Ice Age Farmer's channel, subscribe. He keeps his finger on the pulse of all of these things going on with meat the water shortages that is going on because of the CO2. Um, with the massive reduction in CO2 due to nobody driving around and plants and things not being up and working, uh, CO2 plunged. And there's going to be detrimental effects on our water due to this. Yeah, these climate people think that, oh, this is great. This is so great. I guess they didn't think about the outcomes of the cycle of life. You know, CO2 out, oxygen in, the nitrogen cycle, all of these things. Cycle of life, you know. Uh, no more meat. Plants closing indefinitely. They are. Um, he has great videos. Um, I'll put his link in the pinned comments. Yeah, things are getting really bad. Really bad. Um, I, I honestly don't know, um, what if nobody's going to stand up and do anything if if we have any hope farmers told to quit farming yep farmers were told to sell cattle um look right here they're having to empty their milk this is this is hor horrific Okay, so you're going to go to this petition right here, and I'm going to leave the link down below. We've got to do something, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Like, share, and subscribe.